number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, hello. Welcome to the Stanley Parable of the All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh yeah, so you can turn these computers off for whatever reason. <coughs> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How does someone dispute with co-worker? Let it fall up inside you. Take it out passive aggressively with other workers and that co-workers. Use your slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slot has a slick blue method in the header and throw some bevel on all the text. This will ensure a how productive product. Everyone is unique. You most of all. Yes. So, Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Walking upstairs. Wait, what happens if I try to juke him out of it? Try to walk through this door and go back. What? Wonder if he'll like follow me or something. Stepping into it. Did something. Uh, guess I could go back. I think he, he's gone. Uh, kind of weird. The other door is closed. Can't see what that might, might be like. Everything is still the same. My door is closed, but this door is open. Uh, it's just a black void. You are now leaving? I get to leave? That's sort of Escape Pod Bay floor, floor 760. I got to go to floor 760. Wish I could use the elevator, but there's no buttons. Just be hearing some random elevator music. It's sort of eerie. I don't. I don't like it. He's gone. Narrator's completely gone. Seven fifty-seven. Four thirty-two. Seven fifty-eight. Four 
32 again. It's repeating. So that means that this door will be locked on every level. Still, there's a light in my room set. So if it dies, so something's definitely gonna change in 760, right? Oh, it's getting darker. Skate pod launch bay. Is it, is it trying to say the narrator must be present? Uh, I hope that isn't entirely required, right? Uh, I don't, there's an escape pod left. Bruh, I was almost in the escape pod. And then it starts again, but is the narrator here? All of his co-workers oh, yep, were gone. There. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What happens if I just turn all these computers on? Awaiting input. Input received. I can't give more input. Okay, let's try to go a different way. Find new endings. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. What if I didn't? How about how would I just thought? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <coughs> Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. Danger. I realize Danger that investing everywhere. in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Uh -huh. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Uh -huh. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. It? To put your work aside, to let her back into your life, she's what the heck been are you waiting. Talking about? Oh God, another void room. Oh. That's her, Stanley. You need to uh. be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can. Uh. Oh no, 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 no! You can't. Did you just unplug the phone? Yes. Now, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually. Uh chosen incorrectly. I, just I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. I mean, How on earth I are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How have I not noticed it sooner? What are you talking about? You're not about? Stanley. You're a real person. Yes. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. I'm just Please around. observe this helpful instructional video. Where? Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert 
has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Yeah. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice yeah. would you make? Remember First that one. unlike here, the real world makes sense, and at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Indeed. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. there, you'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Oh, God. What if I just... ruined you I can't believe after everything we talked about that you my story you've destroyed my work why for what what did you get out of that what did you think was so special about seeing the game undone left here like so much garbage it well it's worthless now and what am I supposed to do even if there were a way to continue would it be worth it to know that my story is now incorrect how can I go back to that I can't erase that knowledge I'll have to live with it forever Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. No, I have to. No, I'm, I'm I you to have to. No, don't you freaking there. Oh, God. What have you done? Pile of rubbish with you, you who 
thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back! ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back! ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Uh, you used to be able to go down there. There used to be an executive bathroom thing here. Why are things different? That wallpaper wasn't green. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, Let unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark? 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Night Shark 115. Night Shark 115? <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. <clears throat> Night Shark 115. How close do I have to get to my goddamn microphone? I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Night Shark 115. Okay, fine, you're not gonna do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing for your respect. 
the kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. There's going to so, be some after this, isn't there? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. He's like eventually gonna see me and uh, or the game's just gonna restart on that. Yep, that works too. All of his co-workers were gone. What could oh please? Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door twenty. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Now shut up, I'm going to the new content. So, uh, where's that new content? Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Okay, so far it's an elephant. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere? Or, oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's get to it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe mostly tedious. It's as if the... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. All right. All right. Let's see. It's the jump circle. Is it? Is that it? Surely that's not all new content, and there has to be something else, right? Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not normal. It's just elevators and jumping. 
If this podcast is for exciting new content, if this is new content, then I could just read you the whole collection. There's plenty of hours of new content right there. I could come to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable of Ultra Deluxe. Now with over a thousand hours of new content. And every... Oh, wait, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew they had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. That's it, it! Oh, you've got to be kidding me! You see, Stan, then? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason to other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of rust on ship that's going on it. In fact, I'm lying right now like games achievements, and it's hard to believe what one actually says is test achievement must be ignored. What about the shit that I signed up on this? I mean, I'm furious, and I'm offended. I intend to play these people on the Twitter. In the game Steam page, and you'll actually see an achievement called Test Achievement. Please ignore. And who put this in the end? It's my fault, Stan. I built up so much anticipation around the content. Yep. It could never, never have been done as like expectations. If you're still with me, me. why don't we just get these nests that they hit? And we'll try to get that one more we'll stand in our palace of video map out. No fear of riddles. No fear of riddles. Just do me, having a great time together the whole way. way. What do you see if you get there? Okay then. What the heck? Um, the right there? The right there. Stay! Come over here! In the minute, I want to show you something. Okay, you remember how much I was satisfied when you were trying to learn the content that turned out to be the way you were going to be thinking about the past, and how much better the standard of the world seems to be. So I might make something special and touch out the way I will with any of the developments when I find it. Just just our, our little, little secret. Take a look. I call it, it, it the memory, memory zone. zone. It's where I have to store all my, my favorite memories so, so I can relive the, the peak experiences of my, my life when, whenever I, I want. It is the memories I belong to the stand that I belong, belong, to, belong, to, belong to, to the sea. Because you see, Stan, doesn't the memories of my mind my mind of how wonderful the stand that I belong to the forest was started with a cheesy re-read release? Remember back in October 2013, when the game was originally launched. Back, back then, oh. video games had integrity. Back, 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 back then, it all, all meant something. something. But oh, the way it was. A Galactic Cafe game. Demonstration. Go outside, don't play for five years, not achieve it. It's possible to get this achievement. <clears throat> Multiple nominees. Stanley dying. Los Angeles Times Daily Mail deals with tough choices. New video game releasing today. What if these are actual newspapers? Loving the memory of little Stanley. And over here is where I keep reviewing the Stanley Parable. Like the stunning triumph of game journalism, 10 out of 10 from the destroyer.com. James Stephanie Stanley writes, and I wrote, We are so many games that are hard to be more than a game's end by less than any form of art. Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever, ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. 
It was, it was literally every game ever, ever created. It was, it was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, it's, it's nothing. nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the standing parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Oh, I want food. Oh, it's Bateman's. That's just Stanley. Are these actual developer screenshots? Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. Well, the standard parable is both a richly a stimulating time, commentary so on the nature. Hey, I'm just gonna leave it right here. This is my first playthrough of the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I hope you guys enjoy some new videos coming out soon. I know I, my upload schedule is non existent, but I am, am going to try to upload at least like each Wednesday. I'll also create a clips compilation of this after this video is over. So I hope you guys have a good time, and bye.